Hello everyone. My name is Amata Lupaibun. I am one of the two principals of the Department of Architecture, a design studio based in Bangkok, Thailand. We focus on architecture design, but we also do interior design and landscape design for the projects that we do the building design as well. Most of our works are public buildings, uh, including uh, hotel and resort, uh, the, the, the hospitality projects that we are going to talk about today. But apart from that, we also do many kinds of building. We did a university library in Bangkok, Thailand Creative and Design Center. We also do quite a few small buildings like uh, pavilions. We did a few office buildings. And in some cases, we do only the interior design part of the project, like uh, some restaurants, um, uh, hotel lobbies. But today, we will focus on hospitality kind of projects. So today, I'm going to show you a few hotels and a few um, uh, lifestyle centers that both located in Thailand and in China. Actually, I am happy to tell you that um, uh, from today, 50% of our works are projects that are located in China. The first project that I am going to talk about is the Mist Hot Spring Hotel, a hot spring hotel that is located in the city of Suzhang in Henan province in China. There is a Chinese name, Wang Man Ti. Since the project is a hot spring hotel, for architectural design, we like to enhance the beauty of the hot spring mist. The hot spring mist, it is a white translucent volume that for myself, I think it is quite sensual, very romantic and surreally beautiful. And we like to enhance this beauty. Starting from the master layout design, this is a photo from a drone. You can see that there is a big man-made lake in the middle, surrounded by public buildings, all-day dining, lobby and bar, and also a spa. In the middle of the lake, it is an outdoor hot spring island. We put nozzles in the lake to create a white misty volume of steam in the middle of public area and uh, a private hot spring pool. This is the image you see from a bar. So you won't see people half naked in the pool because you have to look through the white volume of the mist. The mist also create quite a sensual feel to the ambience. Now you are sitting in the pool and you are looking into the lobby bar, but you cannot see anyone in the bar through the thick layers of the mist. And at night, we lit up from below. So the mist is lit up to be a bright light volume floating above the surface of the water. I first went to the site in winter, like eight, nine years ago. I noticed that during that time of the year, there are not so much colors at all. Everything looks so grayish, no green leaves on the trees, melted snow everywhere. It looked a little bit gloomy and sad. So it is our intention trying to find a unique way to colorize our guest experience. So I am inspired by old Hollywood movie. Before 1900, all the movies were in black and white. During the year of 1900 to 1920s, artists hand paint color layers onto the black and white film, frame by frame. And when you run 
all the frames together into a movie, you will see colorful movie. But it is colorful, but it is not real. It looks so surreal. You know that the colors is not at the characters, but the colors seem to be floating in the air. So I am inspired by this technique, the technique that there is a translucent layers on top of the black and white film, and then it creates a colorful and surreal outcome. So I use this technique into our building design. Starting from the gray mass of the guest room, it is like a black and white film. Then I'm trying to create a layer of translucent color onto the architecture, starting by creating a frame, a trellis structure that is inspired by bamboo scaffolding. And then we place colorful glasses on some of the voids. The color of the glasses were depicted from beautiful blue sky in the afternoon and purple sky in the evening. And it become a colorful translucent architectural facade. When the light touch it, it bring colorful shade and shadow into the space in between. And it create a really nice pattern of colorful shade and shadow into the interior space. The interior space that we intentionally make it into muted tone to extend the color of the shadows. The sky won't look so grayish, so sad any longer. Even on the darker surface of the interior, the colorful shadow still appear. Here is the pre-function area in front of the ballroom. The floating mass of the architecture that wrap with the translucent colorful facade reflect onto the surface of the lake. The architecture is colorful, stood out from the colorless atmosphere. The glass play with the light. The glass continue to be used in the private hospital pool. At night, the building look like a lantern that double its image onto the surface of the water. Here is the drop-off area. In front of you is a lobby and on the right side, is a ballroom. In the middle is a reflecting pond in which when we took the photo it became frozen. The important question now is how do we continue architectural design intention into interior spaces? Since for the architecture we try to enhance the beauty of the mist, for the interior design we like to explore the beauty of different stages of water and mist into site-specific installation in all the public areas. Let's start with the lobby and the bar. We were inspired by the colorful spectrum of the reflection when we look through the mist against the sun. That inspired us to design a 45 meter long installation above the bar in front of the lobby. This is the first step when you walk into the lobby. You feel that you are submerged into the installation itself. And you can see the glimpse of the colorful reflection inside the installation. The installation is translucent, give you a feeling of the mist. You can see through the installation into the view of the lake beyond. And when you walk down, it is a bar. When you are sitting in the bar, above you is an art installation, and in front of you is the real mist floating above the water. The image of the installation reflects 
onto the floor. The next area is the Audet Dining Restaurant. We were inspired by the bright outline of the dark clown. We call it silver lining. There is a good meaning uh, of the words. It means hope. We designed the installation hanging up from both to identify different zones of the area, like the, the open kitchen, different zone of the seating, or even the reception counter. The acrylic installation were lit up from above and from below, becoming a bright outline of the dark cloud against the beautiful backdrop of the blue sky. The installation occupy the whole space of the restaurant. The next area is the ballroom. Here we, we were inspired by the light volume of the cloud itself. So we designed an installation on the entire ceiling that made into uh, six modules. On the whole ceiling, there are more than 10,000 ring of acrylic, which we embed the light source into the installation and it changed color depending on the function of the ballroom. You can adjust the color on the ceiling to be more fun or to be delicate and simple. Next area is the atrium. We designed a sculpture that is uh, inspired by the shape of the water drop. The sculpture accents the verticality of the void in the atrium. It plays with the perception of the scale and the gravity. The next project is the Commons Tongla, a lifestyle development in the middle of a Bangkok residential neighborhood. The most important starting point here is that we really want to make a non-air conditioned space that is so comfortable, so relaxing, suitable for hot and humid climate of Bangkok. The building is pretty small, only 5,000 square meter. There are four levels of the building. The brown area show the non-air conditioned space that starting from the ground up. And these open space flow up to second, third and fourth floor. You can see that the area of this non-air condition space occupy quite a substantial portion of the building. And this outdoor space will be used in different ways. This is the view when you enter the building. This open space is common area that invite people to come in. They can sit anywhere, they can buy food uh, from the vendors inside and bring out to eat. Everyone will see everyone. It is a place to be seen. Here is the interior space that we call the market. The vendors become small booth. So a customer will buy the food and then eat. they can dine together in the common hall or bring their dish to eat together outside. The facade wrap around the upper structures is translucent that allow wind to go through and provide quite a memorable view looking from inside. It makes a heavy structure of the concrete look light. With the lighting from below, it lit up and make the facade look lighter and make the building look like it's floating in the air.
project is a small hotel in Chiang Mai called Little Shelter. Chiang Mai is in northern of Thailand. It has a long history of several hundred years. It is known for highly articulated architecture and wonderful craftsmanship. So it is quite obvious that craft is a spirit of northern Thai culture. For this project, we intend to make the project as craft architecture. Let's look at uh, the massing of the building. This is the site at the end to the river with the setback requirement. The building go up to reach the height limit with the roof. We open up one side of the hip roof um, to open to the view of the river. And then the wall on the sides at the roof will be cladded by traditional material of wood trinkets. For the facade that facing the river, we play with the idea with making trinket but in different material. We use a polycarbonate sheet that was cut into the same size as the, as the wood trinket. For the facade that facing the entrance road, We explore mixing both traditional material and industrial material, meaning the wood trinket and the polycarbonate trinket. The facade become a sheer facade that allow us to see the life happening from inside. And the facade glitter very nicely when the sun hit the facade. The facade look like a dialogue of the history and the current time. The polycarbonate is so clear, is so sheen that you can see through it without seeing the structure behind it. From outside looking in, you cannot see any support behind the polycarbonate chingons. There is a small lawn and a swimming pool next to the river. Here is the facade of the building facing the river. These are the photos that show the details that we use a horizontal translucent support and even acrylic screw to make the structure behind the polycarbonate sheets disappear. So when you are looking from inside out, you cannot see any support either. This is the lobby that we also use as a cafe. Let's look at how we design the interior of the public space. Chiang Mai is known for its craft, including Bosang paper umbrella. Even though this umbrella has been famous for 100 years, but recently it has been viewed as outdated and obsolete. So for this project, we really want to create a new life for this craft. We design a site-specific installation that using umbrella frames from Bosang. We develop the details with the villagers. We design the lobby and the walkway hall as white gallery to accent the beauty of the site-specific installation. The installation has a dialogue with the building facade. It becomes an art piece not as decoration. The light coming into the facade change the color depending on the colors of the sky. We also develop 
another installation on the entire ceiling of the restaurant. With the lighting, it shows a delicate silhouette of the umbrella frames. It gives a new life to this old craft. Now, let's talk about the guest rooms. These are what people remember of Chiang Mai, these beautiful places and events. But for the guest room here, we want to give them another view angles of these places, of these events. We took looking up photos of these places and events. The diagram showing the small volume of the guest rooms. We start by cladding two long side walls with shrinken that made with reflective acrylic. So it reflects itself and makes the space look bigger. Then we put the image that we took from the places on the ceiling and the image will reflect onto the long two walls. The image on the ceiling reflect infinitively onto the walls, giving an illusion of much larger space for such a small guest room. Each room will have different image. Some room will be quite vibrant, some room will be more calm or mysterious. So guests can come back and choose a new room for their next visit. The last project of today is the project called Taste 18. It is a food and beverage lifestyle complex in Zhengzhou, China. Taste 18 is a part of a big project called J18 owned by Central China. In the complex, there are buildings that are designed by world-renowned architects. There will be a museum designed by Tado Ando, an art park designed by Matt Architect, a hotel designed by Nendo from Japan, and also a shopping mall that also designed by Nendo. And we are very proud to be a small building in the middle that is called Taste 18. 
Customer will access by foot from all angles. We want to create a never ending path and endless walking experience that we were inspired by two kinds of arts. First is a print by MC Etcher. Another is the Japanese paper cutting arts called Kirikami. Here is the diagram showing the context. We first cut stripes onto the ground. And start to fold up with Kirikami technique. Took out some of the planes. And the outcome is a maze of walking steps, like what we inspired by MC Etcher prints. Scattered throughout the area with trolleys, kiosks, and pavilions. Add in lots of planting. The massing allows different private space that will be suitable for different kind of street performance. This project is being in construction at the moment. I hope it will be complete pretty soon. That's the end of my presentation today. I have a list of uh, a few questions that I need to answer. The first one is, how does the pandemic influence my work and my life? I think the pandemic affects our working method quite drastically. Um, it, actually, in our office, we have been working at home for more than two years, and it seems like we will continue to do so. Uh, even though the current situation of the pandemic is getting much better here in Thailand. We found that being apart, we have uh, our own uh, private time to manage. So we can like work life balance uh, quite nicely. And the efficiency of working still remain pretty much the same uh, with the help of like Zooms and uh, Microsoft Teams. So uh, at the moment, we prefer to still working at home. The second question is, what do you think of the challenge of future trends of hotel design post pandemic? Actually, I just got back from Europe uh, like, like a week ago. I found that the situation in Europe um, is getting very close to normal and I think it is such a matter of time that uh, uh, in Asia, including China, uh, we will um, get back to what used to be normal. But of course, designers need to keep in mind if the pandemic comes again, it might be different kind of virus. Uh, so the architecture, the, the interior design and the master planning need to be um, well thought of. I think the focus will be in providing a non-air conditioning space, a lot of like a space uh, for um, uh, distancing and uh, the, the kind of material that withstand the cleaning. Um, I think the last question would be what's our plan in China? Uh, as you can see, we, uh, we have test 18 that is uh, under construction at the moment. I believe that it will be complete within like, like a year. Um, uh, we still have a few uh, projects in pipeline um, uh, with Chinese clan and we are very happy to work uh, in China. Um, I think Chinese and Thai, we are pretty much uh, thinking in the same way. Uh, we are Asian, we are kind of like um, nice and we 
we understand each other pretty well. So I would still love to work with the project in China with Chinese client. Thank you very much for today. Um, thank you for uh, listening to my presentation. Bye bye.